Here's our guide to setting up your cyclocross bike if you're just getting into it. Now, the first thing to look at is your position. Your saddle height and setback should be the same as on your road bike. Now some people do say that perhaps you should lower it by about five millimeters. The theory being that when you're riding over rough terrain, you're naturally gonna be slightly out of the saddle anyway to control the bike. And that's absolutely fine. Personally, I do find that I want it exactly the same as my road bike so that it feels completely the same when I'm pedaling. But if you are struggling with bike handling, it's perhaps something to bear in mind. Now, if you're measuring your saddle height accurately, one thing you really should have a think about is the stack height, the difference uh, in stack height between your off-road pedals and your off-road shoes and your road pedals and shoes. Now, stack height is, is essentially the, the gap between your actual foot and the pedal axle. So different pedals and different shoes will have different thicknesses and it can actually vary quite significantly. So have a little look, there's tables online where you can find out exactly how much, but it is quite pernickety, but there we go. While we're on the subject of pedals, it's a good idea to have a play around with the release tension. In really muddy conditions, it can sometimes be quite difficult to get your foot in and out. So backing off the release tension is quite a good idea, just to make sure you don't get stuck in. But having said that, on really rough terrain, you put quite a lot of pressure on the pedals, so you want to get, stay clipped in. In which case, you want to dial up the retention. But kind of suggest that you probably want it somewhere in the middle. But have a play around. It does depend on personal preference. Now the fundamental difference in your position between a road bike and a cyclocross bike comes at the front end up here. Now as a general rule, you should be looking to have your handlebars one to two centimetres higher on your cross bike than on your road bike and about one centimetre closer to the saddle. And that's because you're in a much more controlled position when you're a little bit higher and a little bit further back. So when you're tackling rough and technical terrain, it's much easier to handle the bike. Now, Although it looks a little bit like this bike is quite long and low, it is actually two centimetres higher than my road bike and one centimetre shorter. But the fact that I've still got a 120mm stem on and the stem is still slammed, and that's entirely due to the manufacturer, Trek in this case, have taken into consideration cross position when they designed the frame. So the frame itself is shorter and higher. So as a general rule, although manufacturers do vary, you probably don't want to size down your cyclocross bike to get it shorter pretty much you want to look at the same size bike as you ride on the road. But like I say, it's not a given, but as a general rule, that's what you should look for. Now another benefit with having your bar slightly higher is that your drops are much more usable and they're a great place to be holding the bars when you're hitting fast and technical terrain. The other thing to think about is maybe your brake hoods as well. A lot of people find that they like theirs a little bit further up. It gives it a much more controlled position, again, when tackling rough terrain. So away from bike fit, what else should we look at? Well, tyres are absolutely crucial, far more important in fact than they are on the road. Now it's worth bearing in mind, if you're going to race, the UCI have a limit as to the width of your tyres, which they run at 33 millimetres. And unfortunately, it's a little bit more complicated than that, because although all tyre manufacturers put the width of the tyre on the sidewall, actually that does vary and it's your responsibility as the rider to make sure that if the UCI did come along with a tape measure it would come up as 33s. So these tyres that I'm using here are 33mm but they're on really wide rims so I suspect that if I tried to race on them and someone was really picky they probably wouldn't let me start. However, for general riding and training I use always 33 to 35mm tyres. You get more traction that way and they're far more comfortable as well. If you're really into racing, you'll probably be running tubular tyres. Now for the uninitiated, a tubular tyre is one which is stitched closed around an inner tube and then the whole thing is glued on to a tubular specific rim. They're a little bit more expensive, they're a bit more complex, but their advantages are many. The main one is that you can run lower pressures to get more traction while still feeling fast in a straight line. Now most pro cross riders use them, they are, as I say, the racer's choice. Now whether you decide to run tubular tyres or standard clinches, tyre pressure is really, really important. Now as I've just said, lower pressures generally mean more traction, but there is also a greater risk of punctures. So in order to find your perfect tyre pressure, you're actually going to have to vary it quite a bit. Firstly depending on your weight, but also depending on where you ride. Now for tubulars, for a 70 kilogram rider, I'd suggest something around 25 psi. Top riders could probably go lower depending on the course, and if it's faster or more bumpy, then you might want to go slightly higher. Now for clinches, you're always going to have to put a little bit more pressure in. They're more susceptible to punctures generally. So I'd say about 35 psi is probably the lowest limit. For general riding, a light and skillful rider will probably want at least 40 psi in, and if you're heavier or you ride in much rockier terrain, then at least 60 psi. The trade-off being that you get less traction and it's much, much less comfortable. 
Now, just to throw another option into the mix, tubeless tyres are also great for cyclocross. Now, that's where you put sealant inside the tyres, which means you can use them without inner tubes. The main reason being puncture protection is absolutely brilliant, so you can run lower pressures without the risk of pinch flats. Now, they're not as good for racing as a tubular tyre, and until very recently, the range was really, really limited, so you had to make do with trying to make your standard tyres work using a conversion kit. But now the range is better and we have actually just done a video showing you exactly how to convert your current setup to tubeless. So it's a bit of grief but I think it's really worth it. Wheels are generally standard lightweight road ones but if you're a heavier rider then you might want to consider something a little bit more sturdy. And if you do have a choice, looking for something with a wide rim is great because the wider profile supports larger cyclocross tyres much better and it does actually really improve the handling. The other thing to talk about is gearing. Now most pro cross riders will use a 46-39 chainring, but most cross bikes are actually sold with a compact chain set which is 46-36. And that's probably better suited for normal riding. Personally, I prefer having a 39 in a chainring. My theory is that if I'm going too slowly to push a 39, then I'm probably better off running. But that's kind of race specific, I guess. Now at the back, you need quite a broad range on your cassette. This is an 1128, which is absolutely perfect. If you're running older Shimano, you're probably limited to a 1227, but that's obviously absolutely fine as well. Now, if you do use a bigger cassette, you might find that you have to use a long cage rear mech. And that's totally cool, but they are sometimes slightly more prone to mishaps in thick mud, and that will essentially end up being quite a costly thing as your rear mech can kind of get torn off. As an aside, it's always worth keeping on top of the maintenance around here, particularly your rear mech, just so you can do everything you can to prevent that happening. Finally, it's a small point, but water bottles. Most people, for most cross conditions, won't race with a water bottle. However, if you are in unseasonably warm conditions, or you just actually live somewhere nice, then pop your water bottle on the seat tube here. It means that you can actually lift your bike onto your shoulder much more easily. If the bottle's there, it can obstruct it, particularly on smaller frames. And that's also true, obviously, if you're just out training or you're just using your cross bike as a normal bike. That is the best place to put your bottle. So five main things that you should look at then. Number one, your saddle height should be the same as on your road bike. Number two, your handlebars should be one to two centimeters higher and one centimeter closer to the seat than on your road bike. Number three, tyres. If you're going to race, you're limited to 32 or 33 millimetre wide tyres, but do check that they are the right width. And generally though, you want a higher volume tyre for general riding, 33 to 35. It's much more comfortable and you get much more grip. Number four, your gearing. Probably look at a wide ranging cassette at the back, so an 1128 and then a 4639 or a 4636 chain rings. And finally, Number five, your water bottle. If you've got a choice, stick it on your seat tube, not on your down tube. For more GCN cyclocross videos, click on me.